Hi, I'm Nigel and I'm going to show you how to use the new version of the XY mode in AudioSwift. The XY mode lets you use a trackpad as an XY pad, controlling many parameters in your favorite virtual instruments by just sliding one, two or three fingers. The movements will send either control change or pitch bend MIDI messages. This new version comes with the option of using the whole surface as one large XY pad, divide the trackpad into two XY pads, or use a combination of one XY plus two virtual sliders. When AudioSwift is launched, it creates three virtual MIDI ports. AudioSwift 1 and 2 are used for the mixer mode, and AudioSwift 3 are for the trigger, scale, XY, and the slider mode. In DAWs like Logic Pro, the MIDI ports will be automatically enabled and ready to use. However, some other DAWs require that you manually enable the MIDI ports of your controller in their preferences or configuration windows before you start using them. Please read their manuals on how to do this. Let's open the AudioSwift console window and click the star to make it stay always on screen. Change to XY mode by clicking the controller mode menu or by pressing the number 4 in your keyboard. Let's also open the trackpad window. The console shows the settings for the current view of the XY mode. There are five different views. Right now we are in view 1. It uses the whole surface of the trackpad as an XY pad. To change to another view, click at the bottom of the console over the view menu. If the AudioSwift console is on or it's the key window on screen, use the period and comma keys in your keyboard as shortcuts to change the views. View 2 divides the trackpad into two independent XY pads. Each one can be controlled using just one finger. View 3, 4, and 5 divides the trackpad into one XY pad and a pair of virtual sliders. The console in view 1 shows the 9 controllers you can use. They are grouped together in sets of 3, depending on how many fingers are touching the trackpad at the same time. The left column is for one finger, the center for two fingers, and the right column for three fingers. So for example, if you want to use only one finger, this controller is for the x-axis or horizontal movements, this one is for the y-axis or vertical movements, and this is a switch that enables or disables a parameter when you touch or lift your finger from the trackpad. You enable only the controllers you want to use by clicking on the circles. You can enable all of them or select them in any combination. Each controller sends a MIDI control change message, also known as MIDI CC. And the number of the controller can be set by clicking and dragging over the number or by tapping from 0 to 127. At the top, there are the labels. Type a name to change it. This group of menus sets the format of the controllers, or in other words, it sets the way they send the MIDI messages. I'll explain these formats later and we'll see the difference between them. For the moment, I'm going to leave them in regular format. At the bottom left corner of the console, there is the control panel button. Press here to see more settings for the XY pad like changing to pitch bend or setting default values. At the bottom right corner, Change the MIDI channel for the controller. Use the left and right arrows in your keyboard as shortcuts. The number set here will be the same for the trigger, scale, and slider modes. I'm using Logic Pro and Huey Zebra as an example, but the steps to assign the controllers to a certain plugin parameter are similar with other DAWs or virtual instruments that use MIDI learn functions. Sometimes your virtual instrument automatically recognizes the control change number that you want to set up, like CC1 is modulation, CC7 is volume, and CC11 is expression. But if you need to set it up manually, let's follow these steps. First, decide which parameter you want to control inside a plugin. Then choose the controller that will be assigned to that parameter. Enable the middle learn function in your DAW or plugin. Turn on the AudioSwift console and start moving the controller. When the value of the parameter starts changing, turn off the AudioSwift console and disable the middle learn function. 
the controller will be assigned. Repeat these steps for the next controller. I selected the track where my plugin is and open it. This synthesizer has four XY pads, and I'm going to control two of them using one and two fingers. I'll start with the X axis parameter of the first XY pad, moving the parameter with the mouse pointer. This is the first step. The second step is to decide which controller is going to be assigned to this parameter at the console window. In this case, I'm going to choose the X axis with one finger, so I enabled it. The third step is to enable the middle learn function in my DAW. In Logic Pro, the keyboard shortcut for this is Command L. It opens the controller assignments window. The window comes in two views, easy and expert. I have chosen the easy view. Logic Pro is now waiting for the MIDI message. With a four or five finger tap, I turn on the console and start only moving one finger in one direction over the trackpad. On screen, I'll see the parameter moving. When I finish, I turn off the console by using the escape key and then disable the middle learn function by closing its window. The controller is assigned to the parameter. Let's give it a try. I'll turn on the console again, start moving my finger and hear how the sound changes. I'm using a trackpad with force touch support so I can apply pressure to the trackpad and the controller will send after touch MIDI messages, also known as channel pressure. I'll press the escape key when I finish. Let's repeat these steps with the Y axis. First, I'll move the parameter. Since I want to assign the Y axis, I'll leave only this controller enabled. Now, I'll enable the middle learn function. Turn on the console and start moving my finger. When I see the parameter moving on screen, I'll turn off the console and disable the middle learn function. The Y axis is assigned. I'll go forward and repeat the steps for the second XY pad, but instead I'm going to use two fingers. Right now I have assigned all the controllers that I need. I turn on the console and see how the first XY pad is controlled using one finger and the second XY pad using two fingers. I'd apply pressure to the trackpad and the aftertouch is activated. Let's click the panel to see more settings for the XY pad. The top row are the settings for the X axis of each finger. The bottom row for the Y axis. Click here to choose between control change or pitch bend for each axis. The triangle enables the return to default feature. This lets you return to a MIDI value when you release the corresponding finger. That value can be set at the right of the triangle. Another way to set the controller to its default value is by pressing the Option key and then tap the trackpad. The default value features are only available with the regular and absolute formats. If the controller is on the regular format, the sensitivity of the XY pad can be changed by going into Preferences, Slider XY Tap, and move this slider horizontally. Also, the controller will move more slowly by moving your finger while pressing the command key. As I said before, each group of controllers has four formats on how it sends the MIDI data. Regular, Absolute, Relative A, and Relative B. It's important that your DAW or plugin is set up in such a way that it recognizes these formats, or the controllers will not work properly. When you map the controller in your DAW, it sometimes set the format automatically for you, but other times it doesn't and you'll need to set it up manually. The regular and absolute formats in AudioSwift work in similar ways. The difference is that in regular format, AudioSwift remembers the last MIDI value that was sent by the controller and from there it moves up or down. So you can start moving your finger from any point of the corresponding trackpad sun and it will pick up the last value from there. However, if you move the parameter with your mouse pointer instead and then start using AudioSwift again, the parameter will jump to the last value sent by the controller instead of the one that was set on screen. With the absolute format, the first value sent will depend on where you put the finger on the trackpad. 
the parameter will jump to that value and start moving from there. When using either regular or absolute formats, the format of the controller that was assigned should be set to absolute inside your DAW. When I map these controllers, Logic automatically set it up to unsigned, which is another name for absolute. You can see this under Logic Controller Assignments window in Expert View. AudioSwift also uses two types of standard relative MIDI formats, relative A or signed bit and relative B or two's complement. Both increase the parameter value if the finger moves up and to the right and decreases the value if it's moved down and to the left. The difference is how it sends the MIDI data. With relative A or signed bit, the controller sends values from one to eight as an increase, depending on how fast you move the finger and values from 65 to 72 as a decrease. With relative B or choose complement, values from one to eight are an increase and values from 127 to 120 are a decrease. At your DAW, the controller assigned should be on signed bit or signed magnitude when using relative A format and choose complement when using relative B. Here in Ableton Live, you can check this at the bottom of the window when you map the controller. Again, your DAW could set it up automatically for you, but sometimes it doesn't, so please check out their manual on how to do this. That's all for this tutorial. Please watch the rest of videos on how to use AudioSwift with other controller modes. Thanks for watching.